The following pass paper question reads that the table describes some of the chemistry and thermodynamic properties of the halogens. So it's all uh, related to halogens, which is uh, group 7 or group 17. So we're talking about fluorine, chlorine, uh, bromine, iodine, etc. Now uh, a table is given and a process is described and the name and symbol of the quantity is given. For example, uh, the first one there's a reaction given where X could be a halogen, it could be fluorine, bromine, chlorine or iodine and you have to, uh, and the enthalpy chain of this reaction is delta H. Then there's another reaction given where H2 is reacting with a halogen to produce a, a halide, a hydrogen halide and the equilibrium constant Kp for that particular reaction is, uh, is given in the other column. And the last one is probably ionization energy where, where a halogen loses an electron. So that's ionization energy. And now you're given three statements. Which statements about the relative values of these quantities are correct? So we're going to first investigate the first uh, statement, which is uh, he's talking about the enthalpy for HCl being greater than the enthalpy change for HBr. So we are dealing with this first uh, quantity, the enthalpy delta H of uh, of uh, this particular reaction and we can uh, we can look at the data booklet and figure out this so for example uh, i'm going to first figure out what the enthalpy for hcl is now x would be uh, cl so it's going to be 2 hcl and that's decomposing to form a hydrogen gas molecule and a cl2 molecule and I need to figure out the enthalpy change so the first thing I would do is uh, the enthalpy change for the reaction would be equal to bonds broken minus bonds minus bonds formed so I'm going to figure out how many bonds are broken and how many bonds are formed breaking bonds is endothermic so this part is positive and forming bonds is exothermic so this other part, uh, the formation of bonds energy, is, that would have a negative sign, it's exothermic. Uh, so the amount of bonds that are broken is, uh, you have uh, two bonds of HCl that would be broken. And the amount of bonds that are formed are, there's one HH bond that would be formed because you're forming a hydrogen molecule. So that's one. And uh, there's one CLCL bond that would be formed. So that's one into CL bond energy of CLCL. So that's going to be formed as well. Uh, and I'm going to look uh, at the data booklet to find out the values for these, uh, uh, for these quantities. Now, by looking at the data booklet, I've gotten these values. The HCL bond energy is uh, 431. So that's 431 multiplied by 2. The HH bond energy is 436, so that's 436 multiplied by 1. Then you have the CLCL bond energy, which is given as 242. That's multiplied by 1 as well. So, so it's uh, 2 into 431 minus 436 plus 242, and the answer to this is going to be... And the value is uh, plus... Uh, it's coming out to be plus 184 kilojoules per mole so that this first one is exothermic so it's plus 184 kilojoules per mole let me write that the enthalpy change is coming out to be 184 uh, for uh, HCl and now I have to figure this uh, the same value for HBr so the reaction that I'm talking about is going to be 2HBr we're talking about the same process and it's forming H2 plus Br2 and again I'm going to use the same formula which is bonds broken minus bonds formed uh, so the enthalpy change for this reaction is going to be you're breaking two bonds of HPR and minus bond formation so that's uh, one HH bond that would be formed so that I already know that's 436 and there would be one Br Br bond that would be formed as well so i'm going to look at, look uh, look up the values uh, of hbr bond and brb bond now so the values that i get uh, the hbr bond energy value is 366 so that's 2 into 366 minus 436 minus brb bond energy is given as 193 uh, and if you uh, calculate this the answer that i'm getting is 10 
three and again it's positive one zero three kilojoules per mole so uh, let's write that down it's one zero three kilojoules per mole so if you look at this um, statement now the enthalpy change for hcl is greater than the enthalpy change for hpr which is a correct statement because you're, you're getting 184 for hcl and you're getting 103 for hpr so this first statement looks perfectly correct now let's focus on the second statement which is talking about the kp for hpr being greater than kp for hi uh, this is the process uh, or the equilibrium that uh, we are talking about uh, let me highlight that so this is your uh, this is the process we are, we are dealing with. Now, uh, let me write down the two equations. Uh, for HBr, it's going to be uh, it's going to be H two plus Br two, and there's going to be an equilibrium, and there would be two HBr on the other side. For Hi, it's going to be uh, it's going to be H two plus iodine and an equilibrium they're all in gaseous state because the process is described for uh, the state is given it's all gaseous so uh, what you need to know for this uh, uh, before we proceed is that remember that hi decomposes very easily uh, it has a very large bond iodine is a big atom so the bond length is larger which means that uh, this equilibrium the second equilibrium tends to favor the backward reaction. So it all depends on this uh, bond uh, bond strength. The HI bond is very, very weak. So, so uh, whenever you're producing hydrogen halides, this particular reaction for producing hydrogen iodide, iodide where H2 burns with I2 to produce HI is, uh, it generally favors the backward reaction because HI decomposes very easily. Now I'm going to write the general expression for Kp because he's talking about the Kp. The general expression for Kp is going to be it's going to be uh, the partial pressure of the products divided by the partial pressure of so i'm not i'm not going to actually write down the actual expression just that the partial pressure of uh, of the products divided by the partial pressure of reactants what you need to understand is that for this second reaction uh, this reaction over here there would be lesser products obtained because HI decomposes very easily and it's going to favor the backward reaction. So if, if the amount of products is lesser, the pressure because of the products would be lesser and this expression Kp would have a smaller value uh, because it's going to favor the backward reaction. Kp, if Kp has a higher value, then more products would be formed. So according to this, uh, that lesser products would be obtained in this second reaction for HI, the Kp value would be would be smaller, so so this would be smaller. And in this first uh, reaction for HPR, more products would be obtained, and if more products are obtained, the Kp value would be larger. So this value is larger, and according to this, uh, this statement looks uh, correct because uh, the statement stated that the Kp for HPR is greater than the Kp for HI, which is which is going to be true in this case as well so the second option is also going to be correct now moving to the third option which is talking about the third process which is ionization energy or delta hi and he's saying that delta hi for iodine is greater than delta hi for cl now remember that uh, now this statement looks incorrect and the reason being that iodine is a larger atom so if you try to remove an electron from iodine it's going to be very easy to actually remove the electron. Larger atoms have lower ionization energy or down the group, ionization energy tends to decrease simply because the electron is very far away from the nucleus and uh, it would be easily removed. So the enthalpy of ionization is going to be lesser for, for iodine. And the enthalpy of ionization for Cl, which is a smaller atom compared to iodine, smaller atoms have uh, attracted the electron strongly and it's more difficult to actually remove those electrons. So more energy is needed uh, to, for removing those electrons. So this statement is incorrect.